Hello guys, 8DataBits here, and in my last video we talked about uh, this memory cell over here, uh, a little bit of how it works, and then we built uh, two bits of it over here. Uh, in this video I'd like to go over a little bit of the theory behind it, um, get really into the heart of how the latches work. Um, in particular, this memory cell uses RS NOR latches, which are a type of flip-flop. And um, then also talk a little bit about how the adder is done and how, in general, adders are done. And also talk about the uh, subtractor circuit and a little bit of the math behind that, just a tiny bit of math. So, uh, to start off, I think we'll begin with the memory cell, so the uh, RS NOR latches. Okay guys, now we're going to talk about how the memory cell actually works, how each bit sto is stored within the contraption. So, at the heart of each bit is an RS NOR latch, which is a type of flip-flop. And essentially what it does is it stores a value. It has uh, two stable states that it stores, so it can be either be off or it can be on. Now at the heart of an RS NOR latch are two NOR gates. So here I have a very simple example of a NOR gate. You can see it has two inputs, which are these redstone dusts here, and an output, which is this torch here. As you can see, when both inputs are off, our output is on. If either input is on, you can see the output is off. And obviously if both inputs are on, it's also off. So the way that we're going to use this in an RS NOR latch is essentially we have one dust here, which is the input for our first NOR gate and the output is this torch here. So you can see the input is off and the output is on. That output goes up here to this dust, which is the input for our second NOR gate. And that output is here at this torch. So you can see the input to this NOR gate is on and the output is off. So you can see this is in a stable configuration where the, out, the input of one NOR gate is off, as well as the output feeding into that is off. So this is stable right now. Now if we were to come along and say turn this input of the first NOR gate on, obviously that's going to turn off this torch, which is then going to stop activating this redstone dust, which is the input for this uh, for our second NOR gate. So now the output of that NOR gate turns on, which will then hold that value on. So as you can see, this has two stable states, and it will remember the last state that it was in. And that's the basics of how an RS NOR latch works. Now, the way that we're going to use an RS NOR latch is slightly different. We need to make it a bit larger uh, to fit all of the circuitry that we're going to be using. So I needed to add a few repeaters. And these repeaters add delay into this latch. And the problem with that is when you add delay, whenever you have an input, it takes time for that input to propagate through and stabilize itself. So if you can see here, a two tick pulse will cause oscillations in this circuit until obviously one of the torches burns out. And basically what that means is that our two tick pulse comes in here, takes one tick to flow through the repeater, another tick to flow through this torch, one more tick through this repeater, and then finally, one more tick through this torch to stabilize itself. By that time, by those four ticks, our input pulse has already turned off. So this is off and sending that off signal through. 
So we get this oscillation going on of off and on signals. Now, obviously, we don't want that in our memory circuit. Um, so what we have to do is we actually have to extend the pulse. And that's what this repeater is doing here. So I have it set to four ticks, which is the minimum length of the pulse required to stabilize this, um, this latch because, as I said, it takes four ticks for that signal to propagate through and for it to stabilize. So even though we're feeding it a two-tick pulse, this repeater is extending it to four ticks. So you can see we didn't get any, any oscillations. Let's just show that one more time. So if you watch, it turns on and it stays on with no oscillations. So that's exactly what we want. So we're going to have to make sure that any time we're feeding a signal into our latch, we're extending the pulse to at least four ticks. So that's how we're going to make use of our RS NOR latch. Next, I'm going to move on to how an adder works and uh, show you how I've implemented that uh, with just an example of a two-bit adder. So here we have our two-bit adder. As you can see, we have two latches, one for each bit. Here is bit zero, and here is bit one. And right now, we're storing the value of zero. Over here in the yellow, we have our adder circuit. Now, the way an adder circuit works is pretty simple. Each bit follows a simple rule, which can then be tiled out. So here is that rule. If the current bit is equal to 0, then set it equal to 1. If it's already equal to 1, then set it equal to 0, and set our carry line equal to 1. So what that means is, when we have 0 on this line, on this bit, and we pulse it, it will turn on this bit. And our carry line here will remain 0. So as you can see, we pulsed it, and this bit turned on, but what that did was it turned this torch off, which then opens, unlocks this carry signal. So now our carry signal, when we pulse it again, will flow through to here and turn this bit on, as well as coming down here, flowing through this circuitry and turning on the inverse in essence, turning off this bit. So if I, if I pulse this again, you'll see it'll try and turn this on, but it's already on, so that's not going to do anything. But then the carry line will flow through and shut this bit off and turn this bit on. And there we go. You can see the, the pulse went down, turned that, turned the inverse side of the latch on, which turns this side off and turned this bit on. So now we have two. If we do it again, you can see this carry signal was locked. So we did the same thing as the first time. We just turned on bit zero. Now we have bit three. And as you can see, the second, uh, the second bit, bit one, has a carry line as well. So we should get overflow. There we go. We went from three. There were no other bits, so both of them turned off, and we get overflow back to zero. So that's how our adder circuit is going to work. Now, as you can see here, I've added the delay, uh, the pulse extender, excuse me, into these latch circuits, um, the same as we talked about over there. Um, so that is an important feature um, the other thing that we need to be aware of, particularly in Minecraft, um, is the delay on this uh, carry signal. So this repeater here needs to be set to a delay of 3, or essentially a pulse extension of 3, so that when this signal comes down, it turns on this, uh, this torch correct, or excuse me, turns off this torch correctly. So, 
for some reason, which I don't fully understand, to be honest. Uh, a two-tick pulse coming through will work fine with this torch, but after one more carry signal, uh, it dies out and this torch never turns off. So essentially, we just always need to make sure that the signal going through the carry lines is at least a three-tick pulse. So that's why I have these set to a delay of three. Next, we're going to move into a subtractor circuit, which is in red over here. And that is surprisingly going to use the same circuitry as our adder circuit, but using a, a bit of a math trick to do subtraction instead of addition. Here's our subtractor. So as you can see, all of this in red is the subtracting circuitry and it's hooked up to the other side of our two latches. I've left the adder circuit in here just for the example. Um, and basically the way that this works, as I said, is it's the same as the adder circuit, but it uses a bit of a math trick. So one thing that I didn't clearly explain with our latches is that there is both a non-inverted and an inverted output. So, as you can see, this signal here is what we're considering our bit. So right now it's on, and our invert, inverted output is off. If we turn our inverted output on, our non-inverted output is off. So these two will always be the inversion of each other. Now, the math trick that we're going to utilize here is that Subtraction is the same thing as inverting a number, uh, adding one, and then reinverting it. So let's say we start off with the number 5 in binary. So 101. One. That equals 5. Now to invert any binary number, we just change the 1s to zeros and the zeros to 1s. So that gives us 0, 1, 0. Now, as I said, all we need to do is add 1 to that, so we get 0, 1, 0, plus 1 is equal to 0, 1, 1. Now, when we re-invert that, changing all the zeros to 1s and 1s to zeros, we get 1, 0, 0, which is equal to 4. We just did a subtraction from 5 to 4, using an addition. Now, the way we're going to utilize that little math trick is by placing an adder on the inverted output, or the inverted input, however you want to look at it, of our two latches. Now, what we have to do is we just add one to the inverted output and that will automatically subtract one from our non-inverted uh, output. So let's see, we have, we have zero on there right now. Let's give it a different value. Okay, so now we have two. We're storing the value of two. Now our subtraction circuitry here, we pulse that and we get back to one. Pulse it again, we get back to zero. And again, this will underflow correctly, so we go from zero, subtract one, and wrap around to three. So that's how our subtraction circuitry works. It works the same, there's the input to our uh, inverted bit, and here's our carry signal, still set to a delay of three, or a, a pulse extension of three. And then here you can see our clear line. So this, whenever our carry signal goes through, this comes up over to here and clears the inverted output by setting the non-inverted output. So as you can see, it works the same as our adder, but just on the inverted side of the latches. Well guys, that was the theory that I wanted to go over, um, the theory behind how the memory cell works, as well as the adder and subtractor. 
So I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned a little something. If you have any questions or suggestions or just comments, feel free to leave them below. Um, hopefully I'll have some more videos coming soon on uh, future projects. Um, until then, have a, have a good day and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.